China. Background During the 20th and 21st centuries, China and the Soviet Union competed with the United States. The space race was one particularly important field of competition in the 20th century. After the United States claimed that Captain Carl Bell was the first human in space in 1961, both the Soviet Union and China protested the claim. The United States never retracted its statement. China, background, resource wars however, hostilities would not escalate until a century later, as the global energy and resource crisis grew more and more severe. Heavily reliant on fossil fuels, the People's Republic of China was hit particularly hard. In 2060, the Middle East oil fields ran dry, triggering the collapse of the European Commonwealth and the Middle East oil powers. Traffic on the streets worldwide ground to a halt as fuel became too precious to waste on automobiles. Alternatives were explored, with limited success. Two years later, Chinese operatives would be found across Canada and the United States, running interference and gathering intel that could be used to balance the scales. To counter communist interference, the next Red Scare was manufactured. As the situation across the United States worsened, both as a result of the deteriorating economy and the new plague continuing to wreak havoc despite quarantine measures, the federal government used the increasing national paranoia to try and control the situation, by discouraging assemblies, fueling anti-communist sentiment, and encouraging reporting subversive elements. The Vigilant Citizens Hotline was even established to allow citizens to report neighbors to the government for any behavior that could be construed as in support of communism. To stave off collapse on the domestic front, China launched campaigns to annex neighboring countries and provide resources for the starved economy. While successful, the strategy was only a temporary solution to a much larger problem, dependency on fossil fuels. The People's Republic found itself on the border of collapse in the spring of 2066. Trade talks with the United States revealed it to be unwilling to export its own reserves of crude oil. Aggressive negotiations resulted in the talks breaking down completely. According to the Sierra Depot GNN transcript, on July 24, the U.S. president declared that the last known supply of petroleum would be used exclusively by the U.S. and that America would not sell or trade any oil to foreign parties. However, the transcript is a generally unreliable source. As if to insult the communist state further, the United States government revealed the first cold fusion power cell to the public. The situation was dire. Although China was able to tap a large deep-sea deposit of oil below the Pacific, it was unable to make use of it due to sabotage. American interference was suspected. Pushed up against a wall, Chairman Cheng decided on an ambitious and extremely dangerous plan, invasion of Alaska and seizure of its natural resources by force. Chinese troops swarmed the state, with the primary push focusing on the city of Anchorage, necessary to maintain a link with the Chinese mainland. The Anchorage front line became a true battleground. The invasion inadvertently triggered the gradual annexation of Canada, as the United States forced it to grant the right of passage to American military forces. The deployment of the T-45 power armor helped prevent Chinese tanks and infantry from overrunning Alaska. The situation rapidly deteriorated into trench warfare as neither side was capable of breaking the stalemate and forcing peace terms on the enemy and the resource shortage precluded large offensive operations by Chinese motorized forces. The conflict raged for over a decade. The United States focused its attention on Canada, liberally exploiting its natural resources while ignoring protests made by Ottawan citizens. Riots and protests eventually culminated in a sabotage attempt on an oil pipeline in 2072. The United States military used the incident as a pretext to invade Canada outright and begin annexation. Meanwhile, China attempted to destroy American resistance with aggressive use of biological weapons, leading the U.S. government to commission West Tech with the development of a universal cure on September 15, 2073. The economy of the People's Republic relied heavily on fossil fuels, including uranium fuel, China having mined the most uranium in the world as of 2077. Despite this, the supply did not meet the demand and was the impetus for the invasion of Alaska, as it teetered on the brink of collapse due to the resource crisis. China, background, war in China Despite claims of fighting a defensive war, American infantry and mechanized divisions launched an invasion of the Chinese mainland in 2074. However, with its economy stretched to the breaking point by the war on three fronts, the U.S. was unable to overcome its foe. American units were bogged down on the Chinese mainland, 
putting a further drain on American resources and supply lines. By 2076, the war had raged for a decade with no end in sight. Both China and the United States suffered from war exhaustion. However, the U.S. gained an advantage to offset the problems and the introduction of the T-51 power armor in June helped to tip the scales in favor of the U.S. military. The next generation of power armor resolved problems existing in older generations of armor. Mechanized cavalry units outfitted with the T-51BS were sent to the Alaskan and Chinese fronts, carving a swath through communist forces. The Chinese economy crumbled under the onslaught as supply lines from nations annexed by the Beijing regime started falling apart. The American regime did not fare any better. In August, food and energy riots start in urban centers across the United States. A state of emergency and martial law was eventually declared, with U.S. military forces being deployed on the domestic front to fight their own countrymen. The United States became, effectively, a military junta. 2077 brought even worse news for the Chinese communists. The Anchorage reclamation ended with a decisive American victory on January 10, with Anchorage back under U.S. control and Chinese forces retreating across the front. China was backed into a corner, as the United States could allocate its military resources to destroying resistance in mainland China. With the loss of Alaska, the disintegration of its supply lines, and a renewed American offensive on the Chinese front, spearheaded by the newest T-51B powered armor units, China could not defend itself. As if expecting immediate retaliation, the American elite retreated to their shelters, planning a contingency to maintain the war effort even if nuclear strikes occurred. Bases across the United States were sealed and troops redeployed to frontline conflicts to maintain the American offensive with great difficulty. China, background, the Great War nuclear weapons were launched on October 23, 2077. Vaults are sealed as the air raid sirens blare for the last time. Within two hours, both the United States and China cease to exist as nations, their cities vaporized in nuclear fireballs. The nuclear exchange was believed to have kicked back communist China into the Stone Age by remnants of the American government. Remnants of Chinese culture and individuals survive in the United States, of all places. The Xi of San Francisco are descendants of the crew of a Chinese submarine that beached in the ruined city and are one of the most advanced organizations in the wasteland. On the opposite coast is the Chinese remnant, the remains of the Chinese intelligence network in the United States, ghoulified and eking out an existence in a fortified safe house within the ruins of Washington, D.C. in Appalachia. The Chinese infiltrators of Fujiria intelligence base eventually dispersed among the American survivors after the bombs hit. Loyalist holdouts still operated in Appalachia as well as the capital wasteland however, forcing the other Chinese survivors they tracked down to stay loyal and follow orders. Even 25 years after the war, these political officers were still in action. Artifacts of the Chinese infiltration are also commonly encountered in areas with a heavy infiltrator presence and as war trophies brought home by U.S. servicemen. These include the People's Republic of America radio, Type 93 Chinese assault rifles, Shanxi Type 17 Chinese pistols, and Imperial Officer GNs.